Hey, I'm Kelly Morgan, and I'm a health coach for busy overachievers. We talked about mindful eating in another video, but mindfulness can go way beyond what you eat. In fact, mindfulness is just about being aware and present in what you're doing. We're going to look at it from a stress management perspective in this video. Mindfulness is used in many practices, but the HALT acronym that we're going to talk about first, that comes to us from Alcoholics Anonymous as a way to stop, HALT, and consider four physical or emotional conditions that, if not taken care of, they can lead you to act out behaviors that are not in line with your healthy lifestyle. HALT stands for hungry, hunger, anger or agitation, loneliness, and tiredness. In our case, we're going to use HALT as a tool to increase self-awareness and help engage your stress management skills. Think of this as a way to slow down a stress response and a way to explore your actions and thoughts when you're feeling a little crappy. Many of our less healthy behaviors stem from a stress reaction. So next time you're about to lash out, get overwhelmed, give in to a food craving, maybe skip your daily exercise or do something else detrimental, stop for a moment. Analyze whether you're doing this because you're hungry, angry or agitated, lonely or tired. And then you can proceed once you have that moment of clarity just to sort of sort your thoughts out and think about your response. Our next way to use your brain for stress management comes from cognitive behavior therapy or CBT. The goal of CBT is to help you change your thinking and behaviors to be more comfortable, more helpful and keep them that way. You might be finding that you need to work on your attitudes and beliefs and along with that, the behaviors and emotional responses to what's going on in your head and around you when life gets a little tough. We all have a constant internal dialogue and that affects how we act and more importantly, how we react. Within this dialogue, we have what's called automatic thoughts and these are filled with emotion and they're sometimes completely outside of our conscious thinking. When we don't identify and recognize these types of thoughts, we can get stuck in a pattern of really unhelpful thinking. Or worse, we can base our thinking going forward on incorrect or irrational thoughts. Those are what CBT calls cognitive errors. You don't want those. The goal of being aware of your thoughts is simply knowing that they're there and then identifying the emotion with them. So you're not trying to tell yourself it's not true. First, recognize those thoughts are there. And then after being aware of those thoughts, start evaluating the emotions that you associate with them and then question that emotional response. Ask yourself, is this an accurate assessment? So if you're going into a situation and you feel like people are talking about you or judging you or some other negative feeling, ask if this is an actual assessment. Stop and really think about it. Then ask, is this a rational thought? Often when we lead with our emotional responses first, our thoughts are a little irrational and that's normal. If you can just slow down a little bit here and start to notice and think about these automatic thoughts, you'll be able to get a little bit more clarity and be a little more rational. Then ask yourself, can this thought be cast in a more positive light? Here's an example of this. So a while ago, I felt self-conscious about my weight. And when I was at the gym, I'd cringe when I'd see myself in the mirror. So I'd be, you know, doing bicep curls or whatever in the mirror. And I'd be like, oh, you're so gross. Why are you doing this? And then I thought, okay, why don't I stop and use my skills I've learned? So I thought, is this a rational response? I mean, maybe I was overweight. Is this accurate? Maybe. But the emotions that were guiding this were so unhelpful. The fact that I felt overweight was perfectly legitimate but what wasn't legitimate was slowing down this actual healthy behavior I was doing because of those emotions. So what did I do? Well, I just turned away from the mirror because it was a-okay after that. Sometimes out of sight, out of mind works. So evaluate your emotions, question if you can find some way to short circuit this. Now what I did wasn't perfect, but nobody's perfect, right? Gotta be honest with you here. So by doing that and kind of just changing my environment, I was able to get past those negative thoughts and be able to be helpful and, you know, continue my workout and here I am totally fine now <laughs> without those negative thoughts. So questioning allows you to sort of think about it, 
to pause and give yourself some mental space. Then you can decide if your response is appropriate for that situation. If you find that most of your thoughts and emotions might not be appropriate for the situation, you should challenge those thoughts and try to find a more effective way to respond to situations. Maybe you immediately fly off the handle when you're stressed, or maybe you hold everything in and the emotions just get bottled up. Find a way to respond to situations in a healthy manner that's helpful for you. As you live your life, you're gonna find a lot of roadblocks and lots of times of discomfort. That's just normal. Like I said in another video, stress is normal, but it can't be your constant state. So you need to use your brain and actually put the brakes on sometimes with these thoughts and these emotions that are associated with them. Address your thoughts and feelings and make them work for you. I'll see you in the next video.